Um, so this is my extension and also the extension of my colleague, uh, Roly Tickner, that's in Rockhampton. Camtasia is a screen capturing software with a post-production editing suite features. Now the difference between Camtasia and Echo 360 is that Echo 360 has its um, place and it's very, very good for quick uh, in and out sort of recordings. If you have an announcement to your students, if you just want to do an update, or if you are a sort of person that actually just wants to do the recording, top and tail and put it straight up to Moodle without any process time or any, any changes as such, you can use Echo 360. Camtasia has a post-production um, uh, features of it, which means it has things like a, the library copyright free music and media and icons and animations that you can use. The music's not good, but it's still, you know, it's free. Um, we have, you know, the visual and audio effects, so we can um, wave our audio where needed. So if somebody rings you, you can cut that audio out or you can just drop it down to a certain level. We'll also show you today how to successfully do a green screen uh, removal of colour and um, that is something that everybody seems to love doing at the moment. So we'll go through that today. And you have um, transitions that we use between different um, media and also animations. And one main feature of the animations is the actual um, being able to zoom in and out on a screen in post-production. So Camtasia is actually a TechSmith software. And there's also a few of those, uh, a few other ones that TechSmith has, um, the Snap It tool. Um, and there's quite a few that I, they're mainly image capturing. There's also, I think they do a sort of a, uh, um, uh, sort of a, an activity tracking software too. If you have any issues with Camtasia uh, for it not working on your computer or you're not able to um, upload, download it, etc., you must ring TASAC and TASAC will help you where they can. Okay, so this is the welcoming screen of Camtasia. Now I'm going to take you out of the PowerPoint now and we'll do a quick session. Okay, so let's find Camtasia again. Now, one thing to remember about Camtasia and any sort of um, like Skype, if we are using our webcam in one software, like I'm using it in Zoom, the webcam will not be used, able to be used in Camtasia. So I need to turn off my camera in Zoom to make sure, make sure I can see it in Camtasia. So we'll just do that now. Okay, so I've clicked on Camtasia and this welcome video uh, window has opened and asks if I wanna open a new project or open an existing project. So let's go to a new project. Okay, so Camtasia is a very basic system. It has what every editing system has is you have your media bin. So that's the clips that we import into our uh, post-production. We have a preview window and then we have a timeline. Okay, so I want to do a new recording. So I press record. Now it's this welcome web window or our input window, which is really important um, that you can make sure at this point everything is correct before you press the button. So we have our selected area. We have a full screen and you may not be able to see it, but the full screen, there's a green dotted line that goes right around the edge of my monitor. If I wanted to do a custom setting, which means if I want only a small section and I would use that as a backdrop to all my announcements, then you would do a custom setting and just drag the toggles to where you would like it to be. I suggest if we're going to do any sort of um, orientation into Moodle, or um, taking our students through a process, do a full screen, and then in the post-production, we can zoom in to each section that we want our students to see. So that's the selection area of what we wanna record. The next section is our recording 
or recorded input. So this is our video and this is our audio. So if I had two camera inputs, I've honestly got one, but if I was on a laptop, I would have my HP um, laptop webcam to choose from. I have this high tech, a Logitech, Logitech um, H there, that's our, the one I'm going to choose. Now in the preview window for the um, webcam, this is where we get the opportunity to actually check what we have in the background and make sure if we're sitting in front of a whiteboard that we don't have any students' numbers on it, no phone numbers, no comments, no passwords, etc. And also check that our, let me just move a little bit, that our framing is correct. So we want a little bit of headroom and that's so that I can actually throw my hands around and explain how wonderful things are. The next one is our audio. So this audio is a true indicator of um, audio levels. So if I scream, for which I won't, so it comes distorted and you can't actually change it after it is distorted. Even in the post-production, if we lower the volume, we're only lowering distorted audio. So if I, uh, my recording is very, very low, I can increase the volume level in my post-production, but I'm also increasing atmosphere noise like air conditioning, open office plan noise, people talking and doors opening and closing. So it's best to make sure that the first thing we do is check and make sure our audio level is at exact the right spot that we want it to be. So we're gonna start recording. I'll just bring up a web page. So we got the CQ University web page. So at the moment, because I've started recording, my picture in picture we can't see any anymore. There's no need for you to see your picture in picture while you're recording but it will be in the um, end product when you go to your editing. So we can take our students through here, we can pick a course, we can say, okay, I want to search in CANS, and these are the courses that I can search. So because I picked the full screen, it is recording all of this area. And so we have vacant spaces here. But in the post-production, we can zoom into certain sections and show our students what we want them to see. Now, I'm actually also using moving the cursor around because there's another function of Camtasia called a cursor effect. And then we can apply different effects to our cursor as it moves, um, like a spotlight or a highlighting pen. One thing to remember too that in using Camtasia, because we are using it, we've got to be careful what we're actually recording because of copyright information. So we don't use Camtasia to record anything which is somebody else's production as in YouTube clips. If you find a YouTube clip which has a really great animation that you want to use in your courses, it's best to talk to, best to email the producer of that particular clip in YouTube and explaining that you want to use this clip in your um, degree or your course. It is clip protected behind password protection and it will only use and not be able to be downloadable. And 99% of the time, they're very happy um, to allow that to happen as long as they're a little bit of you know, credit and um, they use Dropbox or any other way to get that video to you. Okay, so I've done my recording now. I can tell that I've been recording because down the bottom we have a green um, Camtasia icon and a red Camtasia icon. So I click on that. Up here is the duration of my um, presentation. My audio is working really well and there's my picture in picture. If when I was starting um, my audio and there was a solid multicolored line here, not moving up and down, then you would have a audio input issue, which would be something like uh, the cables aren't working or the sound card or anything. It's, it's a breakup of the digital um, transfer. And it's the same with your camera. If your camera has a digital pixelation that is breaking up, you will see it in your preview window for the camera here. And that's where you need to actually contact TASAC.
Okay, so now we're going to go into editing. So we have two tracks here, one which is our webcam track and one which is the screen of the, my monitor. Now we have two tracks, so when we start, it comes in as track one and track two. My best practice tip is that we highlight each these two tracks and just move them up by one track. So we have this one free here that we can work with. And I'll explain why in greater detail in a moment. Now you have your pitch and picture, which is down here in the corner, corner, and that's the default setting of where it belongs. So if I want to move that along, I click on my track, I grab the picture and picture, and I drag it, and using these toggles, enlarge it wherever I would like it to go. It will remain in that position until I decrease the um, size of that picture and picture. In the playhead button, this is the playhead down here, we have a green and a red button. And that's your go to start editing and that's the stop where you want it to stop the editing process. So explain this better is that if I drag that out and say, okay, this section here is what I want to edit out. I want the edit to start at the green here and I want to edit to finish at the red. To test that, I just press play and it will only play within the section between the green and the red. Okay, if I, I'm happy with that, let's bring it over and say I'm happy with it over here and do the same thing. This section here I don't want, I go up to the scissors here and this is our editing and we click, cut it with the scissors. We still have two full tracks. We've just cut that section. So let's do that down here at the end. I want my edit to start here and I want it to finish just there. I test that. And with your camera. If your camera has a digital pixelation that is breaking up, you will see it in your... Okay, and then we press the scissors and that cuts that. Now when we press the, click the scissors, it cuts it, it still remains a whole track. It just joins them together. Let me just bring my camera back. Okay, so you still have your whole track. Once you've done the scissors, it just brings it and melts it together again. So it's still one track. Colette? Yes? Can I ask a question, please? Yep. When um, you were recording and you brought up this to get it into this bin, so we're seeing this image now, I must yes. have been taking notes or something. How did you get into this to bring up the two tracks? And the two tracks will automatically go down onto the timeline. Once you have... Once we press stop on the recording. Okay, it just brings it straight into this yes. screen. Okay, thanks. If I had um, a system audio, so say for instance I was playing a on a web page and there was music on the web page or maybe audio effects, you may end up with another track that has audio effects, a system um, audio. If my audio was coming from a, another area as opposed to um, my webcam, then there would might be another track that would be just audio. So I'm doing my presentation and I've decided that's great. At this point here, I don't think the students need to see me anymore. So what I want to do is actually take this section, part of this track here and bring it down the bottom, be underneath the screen. Now, the best part to way to remember how these layers sort of work, and I know most people understand um, Photoshop or any sort of layered software, is that if you imagine if you're sitting up here and looking through, whatever track is the top dominant track will be the first one that you will see. So let's explain it further. So what we have here is we have my picture in picture at the top. I want this section to go underneath my um, monitoring section, but still hear my audio. So I need to split it. So we click on the spot that we want to split. And up here, we click on the split button. And now that becomes two sections of the track.
but I want my, I want to come back at the end. Again, I find my spot and I press split. Now we have one, two, three. So what I can do with my mouse click down, drag that underneath and we have on there. End product. Then we go to edit. So we can take our student strategy, we can click course. Okay. And then it will come back. If when I was starting, um, okay. So that may be all you want to do, and then you press share, and you go through the process to produce a file. But this is our media bin. So what we want to do is just do a little bit more editing. So the media bin will. Um, contain anything that you bring in which is audio or visuals or other videos so let's bring some in so we go file input media Okay, so what we have here is the website that we were working on. Now, another way, a certain way that we can also do our editing, if this website here, as I was saying before, you have this area here which is quite vacant and everything seems to happen only in that area. So we might actually want to crop that a bit. So let's, where she changes, let's split that. And this section here, I want to crop it. So up the top here, there is a cropping tool. And you'll see around the image, a blue square appears. And that is our cropping tool. So we can crop it. So that is all what the students see. Not only can we crop it, we can actually enlarge it if we wish to. So this section here is to do with whatever is, is the image inside the preview window. I'll just undo that. Now another thing that we want to look at, I'm just going to take you down the sides now. So we have our media bin. We have annotations. So annotations are our thought bubbles, um, our titles, our texts. We can do things like a tick, animated tick. Okay. So these little annotations last for five seconds because that is my default setting, how I want them to be. You can always change that. But if I just wanted to, for this one, I want that to last longer. I click on the end until you get a double ended arrow and I with my mouse click down I drag it out to the length that I want that to occur okay and it can stay there these are all drawn one thing to remember okay so we have titles and thought bubbles that we can bring in you just place that over Manipulate it around. And once we have something that appears like an icon or the thought bubble, we have a properties windows associated with it. So the properties windows, if you don't see it, when you've added, it, you just press the, the settings clog, cog and it will um, be visual. So we have things like um, our thought bubble, we can change that even though I've chosen that one at the beginning. We can change the colour of that. We can change the outline if we wish. We can change the text, the font. And we can change the colour of the font. And if I want to change the um, text itself, I double click inside that. And I change it that way. Also have in this section, we have arrows and with the arrows again, a property appears.
and if I want that to last longer, I just drag it out. Now you notice that with every time I add a element, a new track will appear. So that is something to be mindful of because if you, you start doing editing and then you go, oh no, I want to change something, you start deleting. You need to be able to scroll up and see how many tracks you actually have there because you might have an element or a icon or something which is hidden and yet it still appears on your screen. So it has to be mindful each time we add an element, it will add another track. There's your um, basic symbols, but there's this tool here which is fantastic. This is the blur and highlight. So if I was doing, um, showing an exemplar of, an, um, of a, an assessment that was fantastic, but I didn't want the student's name or number or the course code to appear, I would actually grab the blur tool and drag it over that section, resize it, and place it anywhere I want on that screen. Again, the duration of the blur tool is always going to be five seconds. I will need to extend that for the length of time that I would like it to be. So we have the blur tool. We have the wonderful criminal tool, which, and again, with each one of these, a properties appears. So pixelate that and I want that to last all through there so I drag it and position it. I wish to do some highlights. There's heaps of things. You can sit here forever doing this. You can highlight sections of your print. So that's the blur tool. Okay. But say, for instance, I'm actually done this and I find it quite difficult to read that because I'm getting old and blind. So what I want to do is do an animation. Now, I want my students to see certain sections. So, for instance, this section here. So what I do is I go to animations, zoom and pan, and with these toggles, I zoom up. And make it very nice and clear what the students, yeah. what I'm talking about. In post production, we can zoom into certain sections and show our students what we want them to see. And I might want to readjust that a little bit. Now I'm. So let's play that. We can zoom in to Sorry, Colette, can I ask a question, please? Yes. Um, how did this window to the left appear? How did you make this window here to, you're showing how to zoom, but how did you make the window appear there? How did, by, see animations down here? Yes. Press oh. animations. Okay. Yeah, Press yeah. zoom and pan. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. That's okay. Sorry, I, I get ahead of myself. Um, so yes, you press zoom and pan. And then, so I've put those zooms in. If I press play, we can zoom into certain sections and show our students what we want them to see. Now, I'm actually also... So that will remain there until I adjust it again. Production, we can zoom into certain sections and show our students what we want them to see. Now, I'm actually also using, moving the cursor around because there's a enough. Okay, so these, um, here you also have your magnifying glass. So if we press plus, we can get a closer view of the timeline. So you see these icons when I've done my pan and zoom, if I create a pan and zoom, these icons will appear. These little tails on them, so it actually looks like a little shuttlecock that you play badminton with. To make the zoom um, slower, so you're zooming in nice and slowly, what we do is we grab the tail and we drag it out. So that becomes nice, slow zoom. Because as you can imagine, if you're zooming in to different parts of your page, it gets quite annoying for the students. Now, I'm actually also using moving the cursor around because there's another function of Camtasia. 
Okay. So in the video here, I talk about the cursor effect. The cursor effect is just below the animations and only applies to a Camtasia recording. Okay. So that I'm using my cursor. And so I can drag this effect over my timeline and wherever I've used my um, cursor, that effect will appear. So we can have highlighter, we can magnify that and drag that effect over again. Um, like a spotlight or a highlight. You can... One thing to remember too. So they're the two main things that you'll be using with the pan and zoom, which is up here, zooming in out and the cursor effect if you wanted to use that to show, direct your students around your web page. We are, we're at the annotation, so now the transition. So that transition is between two different types of videos. So let's put this video here. So we have one, two, totally different videos. We just drag this down in between and if I magnify that, you can see the transition here. If I want the transition to last longer, then I just click that and drag it out. If when I was... Okay. If I want it to last shorter, just drag it in. The behaviours is associated with the whole track. So if I can... And I will never use these because... I just don't see the relevance behind it. But um, if I wanted to, I can drag that in and the whole page will bounce or drift or whatever that one is, yeah. There's the animations, pan zooms. This is, um, again, associated with the track. So you can use it. They use it for a little bit of zoom. You can do another one, which is a tilt. So we can delete those. There's a lot of things in, in um, Camtasia that you may never want to use. Now, once I've added those effects, if I add an effect, let me add another effect here. Um, you see a little triangle appears. And if I click on that triangle, these are the effects that I have associated with that clip. And if I don't want to do have the drifting, I just delete it. Want the magnifying glass, we're happy with that. So we'll just drop that down again. as I've been, already been through the cursor effects. The voice narration, now this is a great option. If you choose to, for instance, if you were doing a accidents investigations on a plane crash, you could bring in several images into Camtasia by importing them into the media section, then adding them to the timeline, adjusting them to the length that you wish, and you can then use your voice and narrate to the images. So no matter where I put my playhead, all I need to do is press record, start voice recording. And remember, this is our true indicator of our audio. It's coming from my Rode mi uh, mic. And I press record. And as you can see, the timeline um, playhead moves along with me and I can talk to whatever, to the paste of that. Now I've also clicked up here, mute timeline during recording. So even though I've done a recording there, you can't hear it through your recording. So I'm happy with that. I press stop. I save, you can name that if you wish. And that will appear on your timeline at this point that you started your recording. So for a case that maybe during this section, I 
did not uh, pronounce the word correctly or I completely forgot what what I was saying, um, I can actually get rid of that audio, do a recording again and use this one. So to do that, what I would do is I would cut this section to the exact and I'm clicking on that section that I've cut I've gone up to my audio and that appears the audio line and I just drag that down and that will be muted on that track but my audio that I've just recorded in the voice narration will now appear. The audio, any questions? That was a, no questions? Okay, so the audio effects. Now this is a section where we can do a voice um, fading in and out. We can level our audio. We can do noise reduction and speed. Now the noise reduction, as I said before, it is best to um, have your audio perfect as, as perfect as you can get in the situation you're recording, the very beginning because Doing in post-production, if I go there and reduce the noise level, say for instance, I have my air conditioner um, very loud, I'm also reducing that level that is naturally in my voice, so my voice will change. And that comes with the, the, the um, volume leveling too. You're, you're lowering everything. So it's best to actually, A, choose the time that you're recording, Check your audio um, atmosphere that you have around. Is there an air condition that maybe you could just turn it off for a half an hour? Um, is it traffic time outside and there's cars going by? Just choose and then do your recording. But we've also got a, a ability to do editing with our audio here. So I want to edit on this track. For me to edit, if I sit there and move this, I'm actually moving that whole track and I really don't want that. I only want a section of it. I want my voice to fade in. So I would find a spot where I want it to fade through to and I right click and add audio point. And then I would like to here is start another audio point. And there it is. So then I grab that and drag it down and that would be a nice fade up. So if I was adding music, that is what I would do. Okay, and that you can add as many as those as you want. If you have a um, phone call halfway through your presentation, you really don't want to start recording again you can easily drop out certain sections of your audio. Just play around with that. So there will be no audio in that area. Any questions up to this point? And the next bit is the green screen. Okay, so let's just clear this timeline for me and I will select all and press delete. No matter what I do on the timeline, no matter what I delete, my masters will stay the same. So unless I click that and delete it, then it is actually generally deleted. But what I do down here, if I get rid of everything down here, it's still my masters are fine. So I'm just going to do the green screen effect. So we put an image down here, drag it out a little bit further, enlarge it using this tool. Now there's other image that has green screen. And the effect that we're using is remove a color and I drag that over the green screen. 
click on that, click on it again. Now we can still see, see a glow of green around here. So we have to actually play a little bit of tolerances. So you can see the um, pattern of the walls coming through her dress. So I have to decrease the softness. So I can put her anywhere I want to in that. So that's how you do the, the weather girls. That's when we, I mean, you can use that in so many great ways, like in the studio here. And most campuses will have a green screen room or that's the aim to have a green screen recording room on most campuses. And I think we're, we're slowly getting, um, getting through and, and creating that for academics. Um, that is fantastic when you're describing something to your students. So we use the green screen several times when we're describing, uh, when we do forensics investigations. Um, we have a scene behind us and we'll have an interview of the, the lecturer and talking to um, a policeman and they'll be describing what's happening in the background. And the students just get that um, great opportunity to see and understand what the academics are talking about and what the professionals talking about. So the other sections here, which is your interactivity. Now that is something we don't use because you export Camtasia as MP4. You need to have these functions, the closed capturing and the Camtasia, you need to have it exported as a HTML5. And that is a we, we just don't do that. So we all our videos get rec um, exported as MP4 and then into Echo 360. Okay. Is there any other, I'm trying to think anything else that can I clarify? Do you want me to go back on, on any of the, I didn't show you this one. So in the library, this is the really bad music library. And we have music that you can use. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear that? No? So you drag the music down to your timeline and this is where we can use our audio um, editing. So we click on that. Right click, add an audio point and we drag music up or down if you want it to fade right down so you have music throughout your whole session in the library area here too we have icons that you can use plain Okay. So um, to export, let me just get this here. We go to share. Now we have choices of a local file, screencast.com, YouTube and our Google Drive and custom productions. And I'll go through that in a second. So normally we would go um, to our local file. Screencast, if we export to Screencast, that's a paid service by TechSmith uh, and they would send you a URL of your recording. You can straight up to your Google, um, to your YouTube or to your Google Drive. This here, the custom setting, if you choose to only just export uh, just your AVIs if you want to, or just your um, audio. These are the things that you can use. So we normally go to local file and to, I recommend doing up to 1080p because um, if you're using images like sonography images or uh, something where the students really important that they can see detail, you want as high as possible because you're actually going to put it through another process called Echo 360. And so there, as, 
as we process more digitally, you actually get it a um, decrease in quality. So always aim for the highest. And it's the MP4 only. Now this is the naming convention. So my suggestions on naming conventions is if I am doing a recording for term one and if it's for nursing, and it's a skill, I would have a um, skill and I would export it. Now, if that was just a screen capture that I do every week and it's just a lecture for my students, but it is done in Camtasia and it is a uh, screen capture, I do SC1. I do several a week, SC1, two, to whatever it is. The benefit of that is that I can hand all my recordings over to a colleague and say, these are all my screencasts for um, term one. Last year, you can use them as you are, or these are all my skills for term one. So when you do your skills, you may not want to have the term associated with it, but you may want to still keep the course code associated with it and then have the skill that's, that it is showing. And we press finish and then we export. There's also the custom settings here. Another way to get to those is just through this process here. And then you go into your uh, Echo 360 ALP um, section, uh, the website, and you upload your video into your library. And that's a whole new process. 